here today to advise you of uh, arrest and seizures last night in a cooperative effort that involves every law enforcement agency known to man. <laughs> Therefore, I'd like to introduce Tom Shear, the special agent in charge of the criminal division, who will advise you what happened along with the U.S. attorneys from the Southern and Western District in New York and be available. There will be representatives here of various agencies to answer your questions. Tom? Thank you. Uh, starting at approximately 11.40 last evening, a combined uh, force of federal and local police officers initiated a series of arrests uh, and searches which resulted in uh, the following. The arrest of Salvatore Barlotta, Lorenzo Scaduto, Pietro Grafeo, Domenico Logabo, Angelo Golio, and Michael Altamera uh, in New York City, and the execution of six search warrants that resulted in the seizure of approximately $390,000 in cash, approximately 10 kilograms of heroin, uh, certain paraphernalia uh, and testing equipment and weapons which are basically displayed to my immediate right. All the individuals arrested were arrested uh, in violation of the narcotics conspiracy law uh, and these arrests followed a uh, approximately one week investigation which began on the evening of September 13th when U.S. Customs located uh, approximately 39.6 kilograms of heroin on a ship which had arrived in Port Elizabeth from Leghorn, Italy. The 39.6 kilograms of heroin were located inside of pallets, secreted inside of wooden pallets and destined for Buffalo, New York. Um, the combined resources of Customs, DEA, and FBI in New York City, Newark, and Buffalo initiated a long-term detailed surveillance which escorted uh, these pallets and their shipment from New York City to Buffalo. The uh, surveillance uh, lasted for several days in Buffalo, and during that period of time, uh, the consignee of that shipment and several other individuals who ultimately appear on this list uh, were identified uh, and probable cause was developed to believe that they were involved in a uh, heroin importation and distribution conspiracy. Uh, I'd like to say at the outset that this exemplifies the very best in terms of law enforcement. What we've been able to do is combine not only the resources of federal and local law enforcement officials, but overcome the traditional turf problems that exist inside and outside of territories. Uh, I believe we've produced uh, an excellent product and a product that you're going to see again in the near future. On behalf of the, the prosecutors, the United States Attorney at Buffalo would like to make a few comments. So I'm going to turn the rostrum over to him and then... DEA, Customs, the FBI, the New York City Police Department, the United States Attorney's Office, uh, Sterling Johnson's uh, Special Prosecution Office, uh, and almost any other law enforcement agency that you want to include uh, will be available to answer questions. So, Thank you, sir. If I uh, seem a little bit out of breath, it's because uh, Phil Smith, the uh, SAC in Buffalo, uh, FBI and I, along with... Uh, some other people just uh, arrived a few moments ago. Uh, Martocci. Sal Martocci. M A R T O C H E. Sal. Salvatore. Title? United States Attorney, Western District of New York. The uh, customs agents and FBI agents advised that uh, a vessel, the Albert Maersk, M A E R S K, of the Maersk Lines arrived at the port of Newark, New Jersey with a shipment of ceramic tiles consigned to the Niagara Falls Ceramic Tile Incorporated uh, 
the shipment was manifested as one container containing 18 pallets of ceramic uh, and or marble tiles weighing approximately 20,000 kilograms. The consignee was listed as Niagara Falls Ceramic Tiles of Buffalo, New York. The uh, inspecting agents disclosed approximately 31 wrapped parcels containing white powder which was secreted in hollowed out portions. Right. Uh, 31 wrapped parcels containing a white powder which was secreted in hollowed out portions of a uh, uh, four inch by four inch wooden panels in the pallets which on which the tiles were uh, uh, contained. The powder was approximately 18.6 kilograms in weight. I want to correct that. Uh, there was a misstatement before. This powder is, uh, was examined and chemically field tested and uh, it was positively tested by uh, DEA agents as heroin. It was removed from the uh, above described container and substituted with a non-narcotic white powder which resembled heroin and small amounts of heroin were left in each package. The C container and the 18 pallets were repackaged and left for shipment. Continuous surveillance of the containers was maintained by FBI agents working together with customs agents from the time it left the custody of customs and was placed uh, on the dock at the port of New Jersey a port of Newark, New Jersey, on September 14th until it was delivered to the loading dock in the rear of the Niagara Falls Ceramic Tile Company at approximately 4.30 p.m. on September 16th. On the 15th of September, the sea container was picked up by an Oneida truck and driven to an Oneida truck terminal in Karlstadt, New Jersey. At the Karlstadt terminal, surveillance determined that the 18 pallets contained the heroin substitute were removed from the sea container and loaded on to a 40-foot uh, Oneida motor freight trailer. <clears throat> the surveillance then determined that uh, at approximately 10 p.m. on the 15th of September, the trailer left Karlstadt and was driven to a truck staging area on the throughway entrance at Suffern, New York. The truck and trailer left Suffern at approximately 1 a.m. on the 16th of September uh, under continuous FBI and customs surveillance. It was, uh, the trailer arrived at uh, Buffalo at approximately 9 a.m. on the 16th of September. At approximately 9, 10 a.m. on the 16th, the surveillance further determined that the trailer was taken to the Oneida Freight Yard on Military Road in Tonawanda, New York. The trailer remained at that location until approximately 4.30 p.m. on the 16th of uh, September when surveillance determined that it was brought to a loading ramp in the rear of the Niagara Falls Tile Incorporated in Buffalo at 2625 Delaware Avenue. Four white males entered the premises and assisted in the offloading of the pallets. The... Uh, an individual by the name of Andrea Aiello, age approximately 52, was arrested in Buffalo and charged with importing and conspiracy to import narcotics. Uh, the uh, other individuals uh, you've heard about uh, were, were arrested in New York City. Phil? Want to Bill Smith is the SAC of uh, our Buffalo office. Uh, do you have something to answer? Answer questions? Yeah, could you, could you tell us, uh, you, you all about this, uh, filter, containing filter. And just paraphrase, why do you think they did that? Were they the matter of what they were being followed, or that kind of way to, to get it off of? Why oh, would to go to the contrary. contrary. It was a security group. Uh, we believe, uh, we believe that the route used was a security group, uh, used to, uh, uh, prevent decoys uh, to to bring drugs safely in the United States, and that's the route they use. Uh, they don't use American Express or freight. Uh, it was a it was a decoy. It was a methodology to bring the drugs into the United States. We believe that New York City is a major importation center, and I think this is consistent with that philosophy. Uh, 
what heroin importers are doing are trying to disguise the entry as well as the distribution of heroin. And I think this is a classic example of how they do it. We we believe, well, I, I think we believe that its ultimate destination was a number of places, uh, including New York City and uh, uh, to a certain extent Buffalo and possibly uh, other cities. Who the dollar amount? How much would it work? Uh, Bruce Jensen. Heroin is roughly two hundred thousand dollars per kilo, right? Uh, we had thirty nine point six pounds. There we have roughly uh, uh, another 20 pounds here at 225 million. 75 million. 75 million. Where's your map? Uh, How is it in pounds? We're more into pounds. Okay, pounds. 39.6 uh, pounds. Say again, please. 39.6 pounds. Right. Off the ship. Increased many fold uh, depending on how many times it was cut. The purity was about 55%, I believe. So, ballpark figure on the street. DEA, 5.6 wholesale. And then give that a multiplication factor of 10. Up to 10, depending upon the purity. 50, 60 million. Give us the whole numbers now, one after the other, please. Sorry. All right, we got 39.6 pounds off the ship. We have, we have the 59 pounds. Okay, Give us the dollar right. figures, please. All right, so $200,000 per kilo. Wait. Kilo. Talking about pounds? Can it be pounds or can it be seven pounds? Okay. A little less than $100,000 a pound. 60 million. We're going 60 million. 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 The heroin leaves that location and, uh, uh, well, the her don't forget that the, the heroin had been replaced in New Jersey, okay, so that individuals came down uh, from the city of New York to uh, see the individuals in Buffalo. They were under surveillance during their visit. Their activities were tracked by the uh, agents involved. And uh, when uh, the surveillance and the, uh, when they got, a, got to it, they uh, took down the other 11 pounds that you've heard about, plus the, the cash that, that was mentioned earlier. Somebody asked just a moment ago who these people were. Let me go over again. It's uh, Salvatore Bartolotta, B-A-R-T, O L O T T A. Do you have a list? All right, do you have a list of that? No. That's all I that's all I have. One here Two uh, Pietro Grafeo and Domenico Logabo are both from uh, Sicily. Both from Sicily. Pietro, Grafeo. Gra Grafeo is the third one on the list. And Logabo is from Palermo, Sicily. Are they charged in a criminal complaint? Yes. Yes. We believe it's Southwestern heroin, Southwestern Asiatic heroin. Uh, the profile, is, frankly, is not bad. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, where did your break come? Well, customs found the heroin. We continued the surveillance. Uh, the surveillance developed, it went past a single individual and went into a conspiracy. The extensive surveillance uh, activity that was initiated on the night of September 13th and carried itself through until last night resulted in the development of the conspiracy. And that's our case. Yes. 
Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, could you explain? Uh, I lost my question. No, no. <laughs> oh, exactly. How did it apply? Did it affect stumble upon this? Just so you know. A lot of survivors. Is there any indication that it might have been there? Customs. Uh, we had. Mike. Uh, could you sit uh, Pat O'Brien, sir. U.S. Customs. And we have no comment as to why we looked at that. No comment. So. Could you get in the middle of the microphones, please? In the middle of the microphones, please? He said no comment. The vessel arrived the previous day. The previous day. And the normal custom is to what? To check the cargo that day? That's right. We have normal customs, and then we have specialized teams that check cargo. And then we have uh, profiles that we use, and we act on information, too. And all of this together results in us checking uh, that shipment. Can I can't go any a, further. Can you tell if, if it was if a lucky break, that it was a routine thing, and it was a lucky break, or uh, you had reason? Uh, cases like this are not made on lucky breaks. Cases like this are made on good cooperative effort. Compared to what you think is coming from the Port of New York, how much of a dent does this make? It's, uh, it's hard to say. We don't know what's coming through the Port of New York. The significant factor is, one, it's an organization that was taken down. Two, it's one of the few times, and the only time I know of, where we track something from the point of importation down into the distribution network. And, uh, and that's what's the most significant part of this. You have eight names here. You said there are seven arrests. Who was not arrested? One in Buffalo and seven in New York. No, Filippo Ragusa has not been arrested yet. He's a fugitive. Could, could somebody once again go through the route, just very quickly, because uh, you lost us on the throw. New Jersey. <laughs> Where in the well, it might. Well, it went, it went from New Jersey, from the Port of Newark. Port of Newark. Right. Port Elizabeth. Port Elizabeth, is it? Or, yeah. Went from New Jersey to Buffalo to New York. And... The ultimate place that, we're, that it was bound for is a, a, a number of locations, and we're, we're simply not, we're not, uh, we don't know all of the locations that it might have been intended for. It, but, I'm sorry, what? It, yes, it was consigned to the Niagara Falls Ceramic Tile Incorporated in Buffalo, New York. That's where it was headed. When it got there, there were individuals who came from the city of New York and visited uh, Andrea Aiello in Buffalo, and uh, the and uh, they uh, went back to New York. Uh, we have we have no way of knowing uh, what they took back with them. We we uh, suspect that uh, that that is the at least a part of the route that was involved. The significance here, though, and I hope that it's not lost sight of, is the fact that it was tracked from through three different jurisdictions and that the, the, uh, the law enforcement people in all of those jurisdictions cooperated, as uh, was, set, was stated earlier, in, uh, in making sure that its, race, its, its route was, tra was traced into the actual distribution route. Uh, that and, and the quantity itself, which is tremendously significant. I mean, this is not an everyday quantity. Is this the shipment over here that, that you see in the This represents the narcotics that were seized in Port Elizabeth and here last night. Where in New York was that seized? Uh, at the residences of Bartolotta. Well, I can give it to you. There was a second. Eight kilograms of heroin and $150,000 in cash were seized at the residence of Altamira. That's Michael Altamira. Right. Ten ounces of heroin and ten thousand dollars in cash were seized at the residence of Bartolotta. In addition, over a hundred thousand dollars in jewelry, as well as scales and testing equipment, were also seized Where? at Bartolotta's residence. Also seized were two, excuse me, three revolvers, uh, two pounds of a white subst powdery substance believed to be heroin, which we subsequently tested and is, plus a hundred thousand, hundred thirty thousand dollars in cash, was seized from Filippo Ragusa's residence. $130,000 and two pounds of what we subsequently determined to be heroin was was seized at Ragusa's residence. Would you like again 
speak to the, the cooperative effort now. You said it showed that Turk was overcome. Yes. How? This is probably the second major investigation that's been undertaken by the Organized Crime uh, Drug Enforcement Task Force. And what we've been able to do, I think successfully, is blend the resources of the FBI, DEA, Customs, and whatever other federal agency we can grab. And in this case, we were very fortunate uh, to develop a, a good solid liaison and a working relationship at the outside with the New York City Police Department. So it was the Drug Enforcement Task Force plus the New York City Police Department that did this. Not only in New York City, but also in New Jersey and also in Buffalo. Uh, the, the effort that was put out by the Buffalo Field Office, Buffalo Customs, and Buffalo DEA was terrific, and it carried us home. Do you, do you think? Do you think that would the break came? That if it was the old way, it wouldn't have happened. If it was an agency trying. Yes, to I do, but we'll take it anyway. It comes. Mr. Chair, it's you, sir. Yes. yes. Exactly. What location terror was when you see terror, and what the amounts were at those locations? Yes. Uh, search warrants were executed at the residence of Bartolotta which is 58-17 Fresh Pond Road in Queens, New York. Search warrant was also executed at Michael Altamira's residence. It's in Queens, New York. I don't have the street address. Maspeth Avenue, you're right. <laughs> and a third search warrant was executed at 61-12 Gates Avenue in Queens. That's the residence of Filippo Ragusa. But he wasn't there. He wasn't there. How would you characterize Like we can't, we can't. I'm sorry. Let me let him finish that, please. Yes. How much heroin was seized at those different locations, and how much was seized at Port Elizabeth? 18.6 keys at Port Elizabeth. All right, 18.6 kilos at Port Elizabeth. Oh, come on. Two point, multiply it by 2.2. And then last night and early this morning, Eight kilos of heroin and $150,000 were seized at Altamira's residence. That's Maspeth Avenue. Ten ounces of heroin were seized at the residence of Bartolotta in addition to cash, jewelry, testing paraphernalia, and weapons. In addition to that, two pounds of a white powdery substance believed to be heroin and $130,000 $130, in cash was seized from the residence of Ragusa. That's, you know what? You said the New York uh, residents who are unemployed. Yes, yes. In New York, you seized about, you seized about 10 kilos in the city. Yes. 18.6 kilos in Port Elizabeth. Yes. 28.6 times 2.9 pounds. You got it. Can you put it together, say, 18 kilos of heroin, what the street value is in one neat package? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Would you want to take a the street value is uh, uh, one neat package? Okay. All right. All right, we seized a total of 59 pounds in heroin. Street value is 6.5 million uh, wholesale, and then multiply it by 10 for the retail value. So you're talking about how much money? $60 million. No. Okay. No. How much money? No. 60 million. How would you characterize the size of this operation? It's significant. It's a significant operation. Large, it's a large operation. Huge. Uh, huge. It's a large operation. Certainly huge. it is. Yeah. Tom, yes. You said you believe that they, they did not have other jobs, so they were full-time. We don't, we don't have other employment for them at this then. I can only assume that they were operating full-time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm, let me talk to you personally. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. How much tax? Except the tax. We put you on a 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 tax. We put yeah. The inside of the shell. truck, the shell. Yeah. Trans
is it's cutting equipment, but they, I mean, as it pertains the umbrella to the they refer to it as paraphernalia. For our sake of our shooting now. At least it's air conditioned up here. <laughs> you the lights never on. know, I agree. What do we have the lights on for? <coughs> Tell them to turn the lights off. You're bigger than I am. I'm okay this time. I always forget those damn cards. You know, Einstein called photographers. Call them niche staffers. Meaning? We have to put up what uh, what's, what's Robert's first name? What's your name, sir? I just wait for the press I'm sorry? I just wait for the press He's undercover. I got a picture of him. You understand protocol. My editors that don't understand protocol. <laughs> Burton Roberts was a, was, a, was a DA in the Bronx, and he invented television news conference, the technique of bringing in the evidence. Big, but he put it on the table. <laughs> Gun, bullets, everything. Then they added coffee and coffee cake, yeah. And then when Gold, the DA, he did that. But...